A cloacal anomaly is an anorectal malformation that's seen in girls. So in a girl, typically, you have three holes. The urethra, that's draining the bladder, the vagina, connected to the uterus, as well as the rectum, connected to the intestine. But in a cloacal anomaly, there's only one opening. So the intestine, the vagina, and the urinary tract are all connected and come out into one opening on the skin. Sometimes cloacas are diagnosed prenatally, and when they're diagnosed prenatally, the ultrasonographer, when you get your baby ultrasound, will show either a dilated vagina, which sometimes they'll call it a pelvic mass, or they may see anomalies in the urinary tract, or they could see that the rectum's dilated and it doesn't come all the way down to the skin. When we see this prenatally, then sometimes we will actually see you in consultation before your baby's born to discuss what would happen after delivery. When a baby is born with cloacal anomaly, we have to do different x-rays to evaluate and make the diagnosis. And then, eventually, we're going to do surgery to disconnect the intestine, the vagina, and the urinary tract. So we go from one hole that's opening onto the skin, and we make that into three different holes. That's usually done you know, when the baby's a little bit older after a few months. Most parents, when they find out that their baby has a cloacal anomaly, will want to know three things. Will my baby pee normally? Will my baby poop normally? And will my baby be able to have babies? And so when we address these, we actually have to look at the whole big picture. Um, so the big things that we look at is, one, how far everything is away. Um, two, what is anything else associated with these anomalies? So is the kidneys normal? Is the bladder normal? Is the vagina normal? Sometimes in these babies we'll actually see two vaginas that join to two uteruses and how far away the rectum is from the skin. The other thing that we'll look at is the spinal cord and we look at the sacral bones because that will help us determine the nerve and muscle development that supplies the rectum and the urethra and the bladder to see if they will pee and poop normally. So laparoscopy is a technique that we use that uses little incisions and a camera so that we can limit the size of incision so the babies heal quicker and with less pain. When we started to do laparoscopic surgery for cloacas, we initially started to only do the separation of the rectum, so taking the rectum off the common channel. But then with some of the different approaches, we found that some of the dissection of the urethra and the vagina was actually easier laparoscopically because we could both see better and we had finer instruments that we could separate the vaginal structures off of the urethra. We know that preserving function and nerves to the bladder will help in the end for function and continence of urine. And so this approach probably, we think, will hopefully give a better functional outcome for these babies so that they will have more control of urine when they become older and able to potty train. We know that with our approach now with laparoscopy, uh, children aren't in the hospital as long after surgery. Many can start eating and drinking um, much sooner than we, we did the bigger incisions. And we've had great results with being able to preserve the girl's own natural vagina and bringing it down to the skin as opposed to using replacements for the vagina. And we found many of the kids have been continent of urine because we're preserving all the nerve structures to the bladder and the bladder neck.